Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We are in the middle of an amazing series of studies on Isaiah, the Gospel prophet. We've learned so much, not only about Isaiah, but about the Messiah who has now come 700 years after the prophecies, Jesus. It's an amazing study. We're glad you're with us and welcome to the team. Mm -hmm. I'm excited because Lisa's teaching today and our little Gideon's band mm -hmm. of just five because of the social distancing. But we've seen God work in amazing ways through this series of studies. And if you missed any, go to our website, hopetv.org slash hope SS, and you can watch the whole series on Isaiah the Gospel Prophet. Today we're talking about well, something unthinkable, mm -hmm. a suffering Messiah. But it's exactly what was prophesied 700 years before Jesus came. And he was indeed the fulfillment of all of those prophecies. We have a special gift for you if you're with us for this series. It's not only the prophecies regarding Jesus from Isaiah, but all of the Old Testament prophets. It's an audio book that you can download called Radical Evidence. And we'd like to send you a digital copy of that audiobook. And it's easy to get. You just write to our regular email address, sshope at hopetv.org. And on the subject line, put free offer. We'll send you a link. You can even share that audiobook with your friends. I know you'll be blessed because Jesus is awesome, isn't mm -hmm. he? Amen. He's an awesome Savior and he's changing yes. lives around the world. We're always happy to hear from you, our Hope Sabbath School members. And here's one from Henry in Nigeria. Right. And Henry writes and says, God bless you for the wonderful way you bring life and deep understanding to the teaching of the Word of God. Yes. Amen? Amen. I'm Henry. I'm the head elder of a church in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. We have the objective of significantly improving the way our teachers teach the Word of God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, you know, you can download the same outline that we're using here on Hope Sabbath School. Download it from the website. You can share it with all of the people in your class, and you can have an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. Thank you, Henry, for sharing that with us. Linda writes from uh, North Carolina in the United States, and Linda says... Hope Sabbath School has been my spiritual food for three years now. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm 74 years old, widowed for six years, and disabled. I feel like you're my family. Aww. Aww. But most of all, I praise God for people who teach the Word of God. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, Linda, for writing to us. And you know the promise of that great prophecy, the day is coming soon when God will make all things new. Here's a note from Andrea, and Andrea writes from here in the United States. She says, I'm in the middle of watching your study for this week. I just had to stop and say thank you. <laughs> I'm feeling like I'm in a small group right now, and it feels great. You've inspired me. Keep up the good work. Well, you know, I'm told that people, when I ask a question, or Lisa's going to be teaching today, you a ask a question that people all around the world raise their hand. They're ready to make a comment because we're yes. interacting. Right, Jason? Yes. I'm ready to make a comment. What's even more amazing is when they're ready to make a commitment. Yes. Mm. Yes. Praise God. We're just so glad, Andrea, that you, got, you engaged with us in that interactive study. Here's a note from a couple in Dunlap, Tennessee. And I just want to say thank you. This is a donor couple. I won't mention the name, but I want to thank you for your support for Hope Sabbath School. We are a donor-supported ministry. The team here are volunteers. They even pay to get their way to the studio so they can share the Word of God. And you can partner with us. Just go to hopetv.org slash donate, and you can make a donation online and be part of this great miracle. Well, this couple sent a note, and I'd like you to do that too, because then I can read a word of encouragement. My wife and I have been watching Hope Sabbath School for 10 years now. Uh -huh. Each week, we are blessed with the discussions by the team. We copy the link and send it to our family members. Mm -hmm. nice. That's good. Mm -hmm. yes. And they're positively impressed with your in-depth study of the Word of God. Our prayers are that our small financial gift will assist this ministry to reach even more viewers. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Jesus is coming soon, Amen. and we must act now. Yes. Yeah. May his blessings continue to be poured out on this ministry and a gift for $1,000 for Hope Sabbath School. Amen. Thank you for your support. And you know now is the time, isn't it, to yeah. share the word. <laughs> One last note from Edwin. Edwin, thanks for writing from Zimbabwe. We have a lot of Hope Sabbath School members in Zimbabwe, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. We're glad that you're writing. Samisa, that's your home country, isn't it? Sure is. Though yeah. you were born in Zambia, right? But, but Zimbabwe, give a wave to Ed, Edwin, would you? <laughs> Edwin writes and says, Thank you, Hope Sabbath School. Your studies have helped me understand the Bible better than ever before. <laughs> Since the COVID lockdown, when churches have been closed, I've got closer to Hope TV. And there's been so much to learn from your studies. Yes. I feel that God had, has had his way in spreading the gospel to families in their homes. Yes. Please continue the good work you're doing to spread God's word for the end will not come until the gospel has been preached in all cor corners of the world. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what yeah. Jesus said. and We want to be part of fulfilling that prophecy. We're just so thankful for each one of you. and We love to hear from you. Write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. But right now we need you to sing mm -hmm. because we're not allowed to sing in the studio with the restrictions, but we'd love to hear you sing our theme song. It's taken from Isaiah 55. It says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let's sing together. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous I'm so excited that we can seek the Lord even in our study today. Yes. So Lisa, thanks for leading us in prayer as we begin our study. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to invite you here today. I pray that you will open our eyes that we may see, open our ears that we may hear, and open our hearts that we may receive your Holy Spirit today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, welcome to our exciting study today. We're in part 10 of Isaiah the prophet, and the title is called Doing the Unthinkable, the Suffering Messiah. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what are your immediate thoughts about that title? I, I know it, it sounds strange, Suffering Messiah. Why, why would some people have trouble with that? Jason? So when I think of a Messiah, particularly in like the context of the world, I think of someone who's successful, powerful, not someone who has to deal with pain. If anything, if you look at Messiahs in the world, they're the ones who cause other people pain. Mm. Yes. And so it's interesting to see a Messiah who has pain himself or mm. suffers himself. 
Absolutely. I was thinking the same thing, Jason. And actually, let us start with Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7, because I believe that there's some people who may have misunderstood the Messiah and may have been thinking like we are right now. Mm -hmm. Travis, would you read for us Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7? Sure, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from the time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of the hosts will perform this. Yes, and just hearing that, thank you so much, Travis, for reading that. Uh, there's certain words that stand out to me, government, throne, forever, mm -hmm. and this person called David. Now I'm wondering, can any of you give us a brief bio of David? Who is he and why is he being mentioned in this text? Mm -hmm. Nancy? Sure, so David is first known as the boy who knocked down Goliath, right? Because he mm -hmm. called upon God. <laughs> Um, he was defending God's name. And then he became King David. God mm -hmm. chose him. And um, well, he was born um, the son of Jesse. And um, Jesse is, is in the, the line of Jesus. Um, if you go to Matthew, the first chapter, it has genealogy. Mm -hmm. And um, it reminds us that Jesus is the son of David. Mm -hmm. And it goes, the genealogy goes all the way to God, who is our Father. Yes, thank you, Nancy. That was very thorough. Yeah. And David was an actual person. He was a real individual who had an actual kingdom over an actual period of time. And so a lot of people hearing this alone would think, yeah, I know David. I've heard about this person. However, we may sometimes have misunderstandings and think that the Messiah would have an actual kingdom over an actual period of time and be a military or political leader. So it's really important as we study the scriptures, not just to take one verse and create an entire picture, but we're gonna be doing verse by verse, scripture by scripture to get a complete understanding of who this Messiah was, what kind of leader he would be, what kind of kingdom he would have, and the nature of his government. Hmm. So let's turn over to Isaiah chapter 50. This is one of the most comprehensive and thorough explanations of the Messiah. And so we're going to do a lot of reading today. And Simiso, would you start us off with Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 to 5? Isaiah 50, verses 4 to 5, reading from the New King James Version. It says, The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the land. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. Hmm. Thank you so much, Samiso. And just hearing that, we can um, try to understand it, but we're going to cross-reference this with some New text, uh, Testament texts. And we're going to go to Luke chapter 2, verses 46 to 47. And Aisha, when you get there, please read it for us. Here we're going to see how this prophecy was fulfilled and this specific description about his learning or his intelligence and wisdom. So this is Luke chapter 2 verses 46 to 47. I will be reading from the New International Version, Luke 2 verse 46 to 47. After three days they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you so much, Aisha. That was so well read. And by uh, the way, he was only 12 years old. <laughs> yes. Just yes. to look at the context, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even as, as a, mm -hmm. a young, a young boy, I mean, I'm not sure you'd even say a young man, but uh, as a lad, mm -hmm. uh, this, this prophecy given 700 years before his birth is being fulfilled in his young life. Wow. Yes. Can you imagine a 12-year-old leading out in a, 
intense Bible An study. In-depth interactive <laughs> study of the <laughs> Word of God, right? Uh -huh. Yes. Um, there's also another text, uh, Jason, in John chapter 7, verses 14 to 16, that also um, recounts this prophecy that was fulfilled. So this is John chapter 7, verses 14 to 16. And I have the New King James Version here. John chapter 7, verses 14 through 16. Now about the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How does this man know letters, having never studied? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. Mm. Thank you so much, Jason. Now, why is it important that the Messiah had this divine wisdom? Because just by reading this verses, it doesn't indicate that he went to a special school or had a special tutor, but that God himself was his tutor. Why is that important that the Messiah had this divine connection or this divine wisdom? Can you think? Uh, his, his task would not have been possible without an undisturbed connection with the Father. Mm -hmm. We just read earlier that he did not depart from that connection. He stayed connected to the Father. So Jesus did nothing of his own, but he always um, sought power from, his, from the Father. Yeah. I Thank think you. it's important to realize, Lisa, that Jesus had to learn. Mm -hmm. He was fully human, mm -hmm. right? He, he was the Word of God in, incarnate or in the flesh, mm -hmm. but he had to learn. Uh, I think the reason that, that Mary his earthly mother didn't send him to one of their schools mm -hmm. is there was so much tradition mm -hmm. and human wisdom there. Mm -hmm. uh, when they say having not learned, they're not saying he doesn't know anything. He actually knows more than they do. He's right. teaching them, but he's not been indoctrinated mm -hmm. in their educational system. Mm -hmm. So then how did he learn? And mm -hmm. the answer is he was homeschooled. Mm -hmm. His mother who was filled with the Holy Spirit in order for him to, con to conceive and, and be born, mm -hmm. was also guided by the Holy Spirit to teach him in, in, the, in the ways of God. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit's really his teacher, but mm -hmm. I think it's important to realize that he's not just there and everything's being beamed down in some way or mm -hmm. poured down into his head. Mm -hmm. He's studying, he's learning, mm -hmm. and I would say praise God for godly parents mm -hmm. yes. Yes. who would yes. help a child uh, make it past all of the tradition and the false teaching of this, this world. Yes, mm. and I'm definitely, thank you so much, Pastor Derek, for pointing that out. We're living in an age where people are uh, very proud and very self-confident in their education and their knowledge, but how humble this Messiah was to actually learn and seek knowledge from God himself. So I think that is a, a, a key lesson for all of us, no matter what our educational status is, God can be our teacher. Mm -hmm. God can give us the wisdom and knowledge that we need to fulfill the purpose that we have for our lives. Mm -hmm. And Jason, did you have a comment there? Sure, this just makes me think uh, because I myself have been blessed to get a lot of education. And I remember uh, I got to go to law school and after I had my law degree, I was having conversations with a friend. Now they hadn't gone to law school like me, but they had actually worked in the legal system and they had learned a lot of things from experience that I had not. And so even though I had the degree and the letters, mm -hmm. they had the experience, they had the training. And so I realized, wow, it's not just about the education. Mm -hmm. There's also the experiential process of learning as well. And that's why it's good to listen to people, not just based on their degrees, mm -hmm. but through a lot of other uh, methods, if you will. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Jason, because I'm sure there's so many viewers who are watching us and saying, wow, what an educated group of people. But a lot of us had to learn the hard way, right, Travis? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of us had to learn from life and praise God, right? And that we can give him the glory. So let's go back to Isaiah chapter 50. We're working our way down this prophecy. And now we're going to read from verse 7 to 10. Jason, do you mind reading those, that section for us? Isaiah chapter 50, verses 7 and 10. All right, I've got the uh, New King James Version here. Isaiah chapter 50, verses 7 through 10 mm -hmm. says, For the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. He is near who justifies me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near me. Surely the Lord God will help me. 
Who is he who will condemn me? Indeed, they will all grow old like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord, who obeys the voice of his servant, who walks in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Mm. Amen. Amen. So much richness in, on, in detailing the Messiah. What words stand out to you? There are a lot of verbs there that I heard as Jason was reading. Were there anything that stood out to you in that passage? Jason, is there anything that, that stood out to you? Yeah, so I see these verbs. There's contend. I see this word adversary. Um, so there's going to be some kind of difficulties or troubles um, that are, that are going to come up, we see, in, with this, this servant, with this mm -hmm. Messiah person. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I have here obeys God, trusts in God, fears God, relies on God. And this is kind of building a picture of, as you were saying, Travis, that connection to God, mm -hmm. that even though he would go through some difficulties, he needed to remain uh, closely linked to God. Mm -hmm. And so um, verse 6 can be a bit troubling, Pastor Derek. Mm -hmm. I want, um, Simi, so if you could read verse 6, Isaiah chapter 50, verse 6, one more time. Sure. Isaiah 50, verse 6, reading from the New King James Version. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out my beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. Why is that a troubling mm. image or picture? I think it's troubling to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, to those of us who love the Lord, it's troubling that they would treat the Messiah like that because mm -hmm. it was fulfilled, mm -hmm. just as it says. But I think to those who were expecting a superhero military deliverer Messiah, mm -hmm. that, that one verse doesn't fit at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so so they're, they're at that point, you know, I think it really challenges them. But yeah. for those of us who see it all fulfilled in the life of Jesus, it's really tragic that evil would so control people that they would treat the Lord's anointed one uh, with such um, scorn and abuse. Yes, yeah. definitely. Um, Travis, did you have a comment? Well, I was just um, thinking that anyone who lines themselves with the Messiah experiences the same thing. Mm. Yeah. And so this is outside of the norm when it comes to the way we think. Mm -hmm. I remember um, a verse in the Bible that says that the, the cross was foolishness to those who are perish perishing. Mm -hmm. So the idea of God on a cross, like it, the majority of people can't even comprehend that mm -hmm. because we've been taught you know, strength always wins, but Jesus mm. comes mm -hmm. and he says, no, no, I'm going to change the way you think completely. Mm. It's love that actually wins. <laughs> and, he, and he comes and conquers with love. Praise God. But that's the God that we serve. Mm -hmm. He yes. comes to just totally uh, reconstruct and re-educate us in the way we think. Mm -hmm. And he wants us to be a loving example as well. Mm. Yeah. Thank yeah. you Beautiful. so much for that, Travis. So well said. So let's move over to Isaiah chapter 53. Uh, this uh, Pastor Derek, some people will say is uh, the prophecy about Christ and they will just say this is the chapter all about Jesus and some will say no actually I don't think so but we're going to do our own investigation today mm -hmm. and we're going to read um, the entire chapter but we're going to break it out into sections so Nancy could you start us off with Isaiah chapter 53 verses 1 to 3. Yes and I'm reading from the New King James Version and it reads who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you so much, Nancy. What do we learn in those verses about the Messiah? Zemiso? <laughs> it, it's really not what they expected, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So they were expecting uh, one who would liberate them with great power and might. Mm -hmm. And here they're describing 
something totally different, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're talking about a man acquainted with much grief. And like, pain. Mm -hmm. And so much pain. Mm -hmm. But what does it mean to us as we experience pain and grief? We have a high priest who has been tested in mm -hmm. every single way, but without sin. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and before that, and certainly Samisa's right, yeah. he's just a tender shoot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, he doesn't just show up, you know, instant mes Messiah. He, he's, he, he's actually going to be born as a helpless baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's going to be walking around Nazareth as a, as a little toddler. Mm -hmm. You know, and then learning scripture songs and singing them while he walks and plays. Mm -hmm. um, totally not what was expected, and yet it is in that incarnation mm -hmm. that the love of the Father is revealed. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And um, Aisha. And I think it, it, it shows how accessible it is to everybody mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. you know, it says there was no beauty or majesty, there was pain, and this tells us that, you know, you don't have to be you don't have to be anything. You can be yes. whoever you are and, you know, God loves you as you are. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's accessible to all. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think, um, Aisha, you have a great point. We live in a culture that's very obsessed with physical beauty and attractiveness. And there's some people who would be turned off by that. They would think, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can't relate to that. But the fact that, you know, he was a normal looking person, there was nothing outrageous about him. It means that it was more than just physical attraction. It was his character, his behavior, right. mm -hmm. and those deep qualities. And I think that is an excellent point. Mm -hmm. Travis? I was just going to actually kind of comment the same way you did. I remember uh, the Apostle John uh, said, um, I think I was uh, John 1 11. He said he came to his own and his mm -hmm. own did not receive him. Mm -hmm. They were actually looking mm -hmm. for the Messiah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when he came, he wasn't what they are, had perceived in their mm -hmm. mind. And so as I'm reading and studying this, I'm thinking we need to be careful with how we look at people mm -hmm. because just because they might not be in our eyes attractive on the outside, mm -hmm. Jesus was totally beautiful on the inside. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to miss that in others. Uh, as well, because we might be missing out on a blessing. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and there's a the saying that I heard when I was growing up. You know, don't judge a book by its mm -hmm. cover. Mm -hmm. And surely he was judged a lot because he didn't look the part. Yeah. But he can relate with us on that level mm -hmm. as well. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Yeah. Let's move over to verses four and six. To me, so would you pick up on um, Isaiah 53 verses four to six? Verses four to six, Isaiah 53 from the New King James Version. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned away every one to his own way, mm -hmm. and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of our soul. Amen. Thank you so much, Simi. So, what does the term smitten by God mean? Mm. What is smitten by God? Does it mean that, uh, that God was taking out this, um, this suffering upon him, that he was instigating it and creating it? I mean, what does that mean, smitten by God, Jason? So, smitten or to smite means to like cut off or kind of like with a sword stab. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is what, what this is saying. This is kind of allegorical or contextual. It's referencing how because of our sin, uh, God has is separated from sin. God can't be where sin is. And so he took our sin upon us. And by doing that, he took God's smiting, God's uh, uh, punishing, that's not the right word, but uh, uh, negativity, if you will, towards sin on us so that we wouldn't have to have the consequences for that or so that we could have freedom through his salvation for us. Absolutely. And what I'm hearing from you, Jason, is it was the sin that he was smiting, not the individual, the person. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I think the most painful, to use that word smitten, is the fact that that sin separates him from the Father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, because God so loved the world, so mm -hmm. He surely loved His Son, yes. mm -hmm. who came in humanity. But that that sin, which mm -hmm. had caused such a chasm, mm -hmm. 
the Messiah takes all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where this cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is the cry of a heart because the sin is causing this, this barrier. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, that's so different from the idea that God is beating him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, God hates sin, but he, mm -hmm. he loves the sinner. Mm -hmm. uh, but the sin causes separation. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, that Jesus was willing to bear that separation, having been one with the Father from eternity, mm. yeah. is an incredible manifestation of His love. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Travis? I just remember the verse, He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, mm -hmm. that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. So it wasn't Jesus, God the Father, killing His Son, mm -hmm. but Jesus became sin. He became, he became the thing that God hates mm -hmm. in order, and as Pastor Derek said, was separated. So it was the smiting of sin, I think, that we're seeing in this verse, mm -hmm. not God killing his son, because that's not the picture of God of love. Yes, right. absolutely. And he, I'm not sure he, I understand what you mean, Travis, when you say he became sin. He became the sin, sin bearer. bearer. Right. right. Mm -hmm. He yeah. became the sin bearer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know... <laughs> that, that uh, you just want to take off your shoes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Aisha, do you mind uh, finishing off this chapter? Isaiah 53, verse 10 to 12. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering to sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong. Because he poured out his life unto death, he was numbered with the transgressors. For he bo bore the sin of many and made inter intercession for the transgressors. Wow, what a climatic end, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've gone through a deep valley of suffering and shame, and, and we see a happy ending, it seems, which is the, the kingdom of God that is granted to him. Um, why is this report hard to believe? I mean, we've, just, we've been talking about things that are hard to picture, hard to visualize, hard to expect. Why is all this hard for us to, or for someone to grasp? Nancy, what do mm -hmm. you think? Well, we've mentioned it that, you know, it's difficult for us to accept that um, a conqueror and a king would be suffering. We expect him to be forceful and in charge and, you know, having people do his, his bidding, but he rules through the heart, through love. Um, I wanted to um, go back to Psalm 22. Okay, go if ahead. If you would. Mm -hmm. um, it has so many references to you know, the Messiah. And just as the prophet Isaiah was inspired by God, mm -hmm. David was inspired to write these things. And Pastor Derek had said earlier, mm -hmm. um, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And that's Psalm 22, verse one. But I wanted to go down to verses 16 through 18. And um, this is Psalm 22, verses 16 through 18. It says, For dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what happened to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. David was prophetically shown mm -hmm. what was going to happen. And I believe that Jesus must have memorized a lot of this. Mm -hmm. And it, I'm sure it helped him mm -hmm. as he was going through this because it's like a script, mm -hmm. what was said and, and what happened. Yes. Um, and, and yes, he, he, he rules through love. He gave all for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, prophecy as well. And, you know, we've talked a lot about the, you know, what this suffering Messiah would go through, what this individual would have to endure. Some people have a hard time with that. And, and I think that's the point that we want to 
uh, address right now. Some people have a hard time with, you know, God the Father being so, um, it seems merciless, uh, you know, cruel, vindictive. So we really have to answer the question of, who is God? What is the nature of God? What is his heart? Because there's some people who may have misunderstandings about it. So let's go to one of my favorite verses and maybe one of your favorite, which is John 3:16. Mm -hmm. uh, and Travis, do you mind reading that for us? What, what made God do what he did? What compelled God to allow the Messiah to endure all these hardships and suffering. So if you have it, please read for us, John 3, 16. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes, so thank you so much. So love is what compelled him. It, it wasn't out of hatred or anger, but love for us, for me and you, for Amen. all of us. Isn't that such great news? Amen. Yes. All right, let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 8. And uh, Jason, do you mind reading that for us? Romans chapter 5, verse 8. We're still answering the question of the nature of God. Why did God allow this to happen? I've got the New King James Version here. Romans chapter 5, verses 8. But God demonstrates his own love towards us and that while we were still sinners, <laughs> Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. Wow, um, I don't know about you, but um, that's good news to me because I know that I've not been perfect. I know that I haven't had a perfect life. And to know that the Messiah was sent for me in my sinfulness, that is such great news. Um, maybe I'm the only one who's <laughs> rejoicing, but I know that this is mm -hmm. such great news, especially if you've done wrong or made mistakes along the way. All right, we have one more. First John 3, 1. First John 3, 1. We want to understand the nature of God, the heart of God, so that we don't have misunderstandings about the Messiah. Simi, so would you read that for us? Sure. First John 3. 1. That's 1. Mm-hmm. Reading from the New King James Version, it says, mm -hmm. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, mm -hmm. because it did not know Him. Yes, so once again, God's love was so great that he was willing to allow these things to happen so that he could be reconnected with us, so mm -hmm. that we could experience his love. And the road to love can be painful, it can be uh, you know, shameful at times, but God thought it was worth it. Mm -hmm. God thinks you're worth it. Yeah. God mm -hmm. thinks I'm worth it. And not because we're perfect, but because of all the things we're not. What love is that? I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I've not heard of a love like that. Mm -hmm. That is God's heart for yes. us. Mm -hmm. And so there's hope, even in the sufferings and the misgivings, there's still hope. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 52, verse 13. What is the hope we have as we hear these prophecies? And sometimes hard to understand, hard to accept. What is the message of hope? Um, Nancy, could you read Isaiah 52, verse 13? Yes, and it reads, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Yes, so even though the Messiah went through all this sadness, all this shame, what was the end? Mm, he would be exalted, <laughs> he would be exalted upon high. And what happens to us when we go through rough times and rough patches? Is it the end of, the, of our lives? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. God still has a purpose for us. So I believe this is a word for someone, someone who's going through some hard times, mm -hmm. someone who's going through some chastening times, someone who's going through some shameful times. And you're thinking, well, I guess that's it. It's not it. God still can work a good work in you and he can bring about a happy ending. And I want us to believe in that. I want yes. us to claim that. I, I want to just uh, reemphasize what Isaiah has shown that he will be exalted, the, this mm -hmm. Messiah, uh, extolled and very high. Mm -hmm. Paul says he's given a name that is above every name. Mm -hmm. Yes. That at the name of Jesus, every mm -hmm. knee shall bow. Yes. And yes. every tongue confess that yes. Jesus Christ is Lord. So I think, uh, you know, this is more than just he's given a kind of a high position. Mm -hmm. He is given the highest position mm -hmm. at, at his name. Every knee bows. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I, I really appreciate what Travis said. This, this, this is not the power of military might. This is the power 
of self-sacrificing mm. love mm. Yes. that ultimately wins the hearts. Would that mean that even those who rebelled, who are lost, will ultimately bow the knee? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They yes. will ultimately see that the devil's lies yeah. were a total distortion of the character of God, mm. yeah. that God is love. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor Derek. And what an amazing lesson we're going through. Um, let's go to the book of Genesis. Aisha, could you read for us Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. And I know we've spent a lot of time in Isaiah, and we've gone all the way to the New Testament, but the Messiah was prophesied way before prophet Isaiah. And in fact, this is one of the first indicators we see that the who the Messiah would be, what his role would be, and ultimately his name the Lord will provide. So Aisha, are you yes. ready? Mm -hmm. I will be reading from the New International Version. Some time later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain, I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while, while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called, him, called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in a thick thicket he saw a ram caught by his, its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Mm, thank you so much, mm. Aisha. What a powerful wow. story. <laughs> I saw you getting a little emotional, Pastor Derek. What is your reaction to this story? Well, as a father, you know, I just imagined uh, when, when Isaac turned to his, to his father, yeah. Abraham, and mm -hmm. said, well, here's the wood and the fire. Where, where's the lamb? Mm -hmm. and, and this incredible statement of faith, yeah. the Lord mm -hmm. will provide. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just saw, and that, that of course was a prophecy too, mm -hmm. right? The Bible is full of prophecies. Yes. yes. And he said that by the Holy Spirit, mm. the Lord will provide. Mm. I also noticed where it says, he said to his servants, we're going to go and we'll come back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. And to me, that was also a, a statement of faith mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that he knew that somehow God was going to care, care mm. for his son. Mm. Wow. Beautiful promise. Mm. I mean, how many of us need to claim that today? <laughs> how many of us need to say, no matter my situation, I know the Lord will provide, provide. Yes. whatever it is. It could be 
financial difficulties. It may be a test that you have in school that you can't pass. Uh, it may be problems in your marriage or with your children. But how many of us need to say, the Lord will provide? The Lord will provide. Yeah. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how I'm going to overcome it. But who, what do I know? The Lord, the Lord will, will provide. Will provide. Amen. Mm. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7, um, because it describes the Messiah as a lamb sent to slaughter. Um, Travis, do you want to read that for us? Isaiah 53, verse 7. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Mm -hmm. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Wow. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, Travis? Well, <laughs> first off, I, I think that that he had, it was the treasure that was in the mind of Jesus mm -hmm. that kept him going. You, Lisa, myself, Pastor Derek, and the viewers watching were on the mind of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, like that, yeah. and he kept thinking of that. That's the prize I get. And I think instead of crying out and rebuking and doing these things, he's thinking, I'm thinking of my prize. I'm thinking of the people I redeem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I often think about the thief on the cross, the first one to respond mm -hmm. to Jesus when he says, remember me. And I can imagine the tears rolling down the face of Jesus while he's hanging on the cross. Yes, it was worth it. He didn't rebuke anyone. He just went forward to do his duty, and that was to save us. Thank Amen. you so much, Amen. Travis. So powerful. Let's go to the book of John. John chapter 1, verse 29. Nancy, would you read that for us? And then Samiso, would you read uh, John 1, 36? Um, and then uh, Jason, John 1, 30 to 34. We'll go through these um, pretty quickly, but here we're going to look at John the Baptist, who mm. is regarded as one of the last pre-Messianic prophets. So before mm. the Messiah came, he was the last one to really speak and proclaim and prophesy and even testify about the Messiah. And actually, Messiah was already here, <laughs> but they didn't know it yet, did they? They didn't know it. Because he hadn't come to be baptized. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's hear from his words what he had to say about the Messiah. So Nancy, read uh, John chapter 1, verse 29. Okay. Mm -hmm. Reading from the New King James Version. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Thank you so much. Simisa, would you read for us John 1, 36? Verse 36 from the New King James Version says, And looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamp of God. Wow. Jason, read for us John chapter 1, verses 30 to 34. I've got the New King James Version, John chapter 1, verses 30 through 34. Mm -hmm. This is he of whom I said, After me, comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. Mm -hmm. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending, and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Wow, it doesn't get clearer than that, right? The prophet is not just prophesying, but he's saying, look, there he is. Mm -hmm. You can't get it wrong. This is the person that Isaiah has been talking about. Right. This is the person that um, Abraham prophesied about in Genesis. Yeah. Yeah. And now here I am saying, this is the guy. This, this is, is him. This is the Lamb of God. Um, Travis? I can't help but think, you know, gee, when he says, behold the Lamb of God, he hadn't seen that the Spirit had be fall on him yet. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but think, that the Holy Spirit revealed to him the story of Abraham yeah. because he knew the Torah mm -hmm. and uh, and that would when when he made the promise the Lord will provide himself mm -hmm. a yeah. sacrifice and I cannot but think that the Holy Spirit must have impressed that on his mind and mm -hmm. John the Baptist said that's him yes yeah. that's the sacrifice that's the substitute that yeah. that Abraham that God told Abraham about absolutely and what I'm hearing from all of us is that no matter how much we study no matter how much education we have unless the Holy Spirit 
points and directs the truth, mm. there's no way to know. Mm -hmm. I mean, think That's about true. all the religious mm -hmm. leaders. They were all wrong. They were looking for someone else. So mm. it's the Holy Spirit testifying and saying, this is the person. Mm. Take a good look at him. Mm. This is the one that has been prophesied. Mm -hmm. yeah. Peter also had a testimony too. In fact, Samisa, would you read for us 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 to 25? He also has um, a testimony about what he experienced about Jesus and also connecting all these prophecies and what the Holy Spirit revealed to him. First yes. Peter chapter 2, verses 21 to 25. Verses 21 to 25, First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, verses 21 to 25, reading from the New King James Version. It says... For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Mm -hmm. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Who, when he was re 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 reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously who himself bore our sins in his own body on a tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Mm -hmm. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of our souls. Mm. Amen. Mm. Thank you so much, Cindy. So um, this has been such a rich study. I don't know about you, but we <laughs> have mm. gone through really deeply the prophecies of Isaiah. We went to the Old Testament and look at Genesis. And, and now in the New Testament, what the apostles were writing about. And I wanted us to do it this way because I wanted to show us that when we look at prophecies, we need to have a complete understanding, not just taking out one verse and creating an entire picture, but to weave these verses together, compare scripture by scripture, Old and New Testaments, mm. because here we get a much broader and much more detailed account of God. And now we're coming to an end. <laughs> we're finally coming to an end. And we're going to go to the last book, Revelation. And this really is a summation or a conclusion of what we have seen and heard and prophesied and testified and witnessed to. This is the last words actually that are spoken about this great Messiah. This is Revelation chapter 5 verses 8 to 13. Aisha, if you could read that for us. Yes, and I will be reading from the New International Version. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a sh harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sung a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. Amen. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will be reign and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Mm -hmm. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the, the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb <laughs> be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Thank you Amen. so much. Amen. 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 Even the angels are testifying. Mm. Even the angelic hosts are echoing what Isaiah spoke about, what Abraham prophesied, what the apostles were speaking about. There seems to be harmony, isn't there, Pastor Derek, mm. with all the scriptures about the Messiah. So now I'm wondering, what, what is your response as you reflect on the price for your salvation? what the Messiah went through for you personally. 
How would you respond to that? And we'll go around and each person can share, but what is your response just to hear all this great news and maybe troubling you news and maybe confusing news? Travis, you might starting us off, what, how would you respond to this? Well, usually I am responding with tears when I think about this because the value that Jesus has placed or God has placed on every human being, mm -hmm. it, it just, it just amazes me to no end. I think of uh, Matthew 13, 44, mm -hmm. the treasure in the field where, he, where the man who finds the treasure goes and sells everything for the joy over it sells everything mm -hmm. so that he can purchase that field. And the thing is he knew we were broken when he did it. He could have chose, he, he could have said, I just want the perfect people, but God bought us even when we were broken. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he did that and, when it, and the exchange that had taken place, we'll never ever be able to understand mm -hmm. the depth and the breadth and the width of that love. Mm -hmm. We'll never be able to understand it. It's amazing. Wow, thank you, Travis. Mm -hmm. Nancy, what are you feeling? Overwhelmed by the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> he gave up everything so that by chance, if by chance we should seek him, we would have salvation. So Amen. Eternally grateful. Amen. 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 And I just want to encourage all of you, if you haven't, to receive the Messiah into your life, mm -hmm. to accept Jesus Christ mm -hmm. as your personal Savior. And if you have done that, to daily walk with him. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Lisa. I thought you were going to talk to all of our Hoop Sabbath School viewers, but I'll do it <laughs> and just say, uh, you've got an amazing choice because of what Messiah accomplished for you. Mm -hmm. You have the choice to live eternally with Him, <laughs> to accept the gift of His grace, forgiveness for your sins, rest for your soul. But you have that choice to make. You say, why wouldn't anyone want that? Mm -hmm. And the answer is we've been confused by the devil's lies my prayer is that today you've heard a clear word of truth and you're saying, Derek, I've, I've been a follower of Jesus for years. Well, then I want you to think about someone you know or love who has not yet heard that truth, has not yet accepted mm -hmm. the truth that God loves her, that God loves him with an immeasurable and unfailing love. Mm -hmm. And I want to challenge you to begin to pray. Holy Spirit, show me how I can reach out to that loved one, to that neighbor or friend, so I can share with her, share with him, how precious they are to God. Mm -hmm. yes. Jesus went through all that he did. He suffered and died so that we could have an eternal life with God. Mm -hmm. Accept that today. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Father in heaven, our hearts are moved at the, the suffering Messiah, but we know it was not only the Son of God who gave, it was the Father and the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. All of heaven gave so that we could be reunited with God. I thank you that we can choose today that salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. You say, Derek, I've been redeemed. Praise God. But don't keep that to yourself. There's someone you need to share that with. Go out and be a blessing to those around you.